Good evening, Oswego, and welcome to WTOP 10 Wednesday Night News, your connection to Oswego and beyond. I'm Mike Kincaid. And I'm Stephanie Sweeney. Today is April 13th, and this is your news, sports, and weather all before the first commercial break. Let's take a look at your top stories. 10 News starts right now. A serial killer has been at work, and authorities continue to discover remains. On Monday, police uncovered a skull and human remnants on the outskirts of Long Island's Nassau County. This has been the ninth set of human remains found in and around Suffolk County since December of 2010. These discoveries continue to have residents frightened, but they are not afraid of being targeted. It has been determined that four of the victims identified were all women who advertised prostitution services on websites such as Craigslist. Authorities plan to have divers scour waterways on the north side of the Barrier Island on Wednesday. Your money may be flying out of your wallet faster than ever as you head to the pumps. According to the motorist group AAA, gas prices in the state of New York are currently at an average of $4.03 per gallon. The national average is less at $3.81 per gallon, but gas prices throughout the country have raised by 24%. The price hike is due to a lack of oil, but gas prices usually spike up at this time of year and should decrease by a small amount in the fall. And now we'll check our current conditions outside with meteorologist Dan Peruzzi. Dan, what's it looking like out there? And I am meteorologist Dan Peruzzi outside the campus center where it is a cold and rainy night. Uh, if you don't believe me, just look outside your window or just look behind me, really. Uh, there's plenty of rain uh, falling from the sky right now. If it doesn't look like it's raining on me right now, uh, if I take a step to my left, you can see uh, there it is. It actually is raining. And it's not that I'm a coward and want to stand underneath the roof that we have outside the campus center. I just don't want the electrical equipment to get damaged. It's all about the safety of station equipment. So I'm going to stay in here and tell you about the rest of my forecast. It has been raining throughout the day today. As we take a look at the weather tap radar, you can see there is some more rain pushing into our region. There's another band of showers that is pushing off of Lake Ontario that's going to come into the region and affect us over the next couple of hours. But if you look behind that, for the most part, uh, there are some clear skies eventually, and they'll get here, you know, here in a couple of hours. We've just got to finish getting through this rain first. In terms of how long we got to wait to get to the clear skies through the rain and what the weather's going to do for the next few days and the weekend, make sure you stay tuned for my full forecast. But for now, throw it back inside of the desk. Today, President Barack Obama announced his plan to tackle the $14 billion debt, debt crisis. After the showdown last week, many have been waiting for details regarding this important plan. Reporter Sandra Endo is in Washington with all the details. Obama is pushing a new financial plan that he says will reduce the national deficit by $4 trillion in 12 years or less. We have to do it in a way that protects the recovery protects the investments we need to grow, creates jobs, and helps us win the future. The president is calling for spending cuts to help the government pay down debt and live within its means. It's an approach that puts every kind of spending on the table, but one that protects the middle class, our promise to seniors, and our investments in the future. The most controversial call is for the repeal of the Bush-era tax cuts to the wealthiest Americans, something Republicans are vehemently against. They have their own 2012 fiscal plan, which they argue is a better starting point for securing America's financial future. Uh, and we do so by ensuring uh, that we bring down spending, that we reform the entitlement program so we get rid of the unfunded obligations over time uh, to retire the debt. Republicans are calling for $6 trillion in spending cuts over the next decade. This latest clash between the GOP and the White House comes on the heels of the debate over raising the nation's debt ceiling, another budget initiative the president will be hard-pressed to pass unless there is room to compromise with Republicans. In Washington, I'm Sandra Endo. Two people yesterday were detained in Belarus for being suspected of being involved in a deadly bombing that occurred in a Minsk subway station. Twelve people were killed in this deadly bombing, including one who died in the hospital early Tuesday. The suspects also admitted to committing terrorist attack that happened on Minsk in Independence Day in 2008 and in Vydepsk in December of 2005. The identities of the suspects have not yet been revealed but one was described to be a 27-year-old man. 
A U.S. drone strike in Pakistan has left six militants dead. A drone or a radio-controlled airplane reportedly struck a militant hideout in South Waziristan with two missiles on Wednesday. This is the U.S.'s first attack since March 17th in which a drone strike in North Waziristan killed 44 people, most of the victims being civilians. These attacks continue to increase tension between the two countries, and now Pakistan has asked the U.S. for a formal apology for the March 17th attack. A senior Pakistani intelligence officer reported that Pakistan has asked the United States to cut down on its drone strikes in remote tribal areas. And now we'll see what's going on in sports with Tara Hecke. Thanks, Stephanie. A federal jury, jury convicted Barry Bonds of a single charge of obstruction of justice today, but failed to reach a verdict on the three counts of allegations that he knowingly used steroids and human growth hormone, and then lied to a grand jury about it. Following a 12-day trial and almost four days of deliberation, the jury could only reach a verdict on the obstruction of justice charge. U.S. District Judge Susan Ilson declared a mistrial on the other charges. The 46-year-old is, is Major League Baseball's home run king, racking up 762 throughout his 21-year career. Just another messy end to put a case and the slugger and baseball under a cloud of suspicion. And I'll have more sports news later on. Now back to the news desk. A Fulton resident who had been charged and sentenced over, to prison over a decade ago forgot to pay a $6,468 restitution fee upon his release. The Palladium Times reports that the 45-year-old man, Craig A. Bradley, pleaded guilty to stealing body parts from an Oswego cemetery and served a year and a half to three years of jail time back in 1995. Bradley, as, as of now, has been released on an appearance ticket by the Oswego City Police Department. An Oswego man has been arrested after allegedly attacking a woman and threatening to kill her with a knife. According to the, Pal the Palladium Times, 32-year-old Irvin E. Hill supposedly choked the victim with both hands and pushed her onto a bed. At this point, he reportedly he stabbed the bed with a knife. Hill is scheduled to report to Scriba Town Court on April 21st. On Tuesday morning, 70-year-old Joyce Malone was sentenced to 10 years in prison for shooting and killing her husband. According to the Palladium Times, Malone was convicted of first-degree manslaughter in January for the death of her husband, Ralph Malone. The Malones had been married for about 50 years, but that ended when Joyce Malone shot her husband as he slept in their home on Tug Hill Road in Oswego. Malone, shortly after her conviction, was diagnosed with lung cancer, and her care will be now be handled by the State Department of Corrections facility. And now let's toss it over to the weather desk with Dan Peruzzi. Thanks, Mike. Take a look at that weather. I mentioned outside the uh, area of showers moving over the lake. Zoom in on them right there, and you can see uh, there is Oswego right here, and there are some showers coming our way. How long are they going to last? Make sure you stay tuned for my full report coming up here after the commercial break. You're watching WTOP 10 News Tonight. said, a nation that is afraid to let its people judge the truth and falsehood in an open market is a nation that is afraid of its people. I'm a journalist covering the big news from coast to coast and around the world. I have a devotion to facts that borderlines on obsessive. I keep people honest. There's nothing wrong with people Anthony, disagreeing. Anthony, stand by. It's a complicated situation. It's been that was right in the dead center of a gun-free zone. When you get more into it, then it's really understandable. I'm 100% against uh, DOMA. Besides, Please clear that's the what makes America, America. We have to get In back three, to it again. Two. I am Anthony Hill, and this is the Weekly Rundown. The Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Want to get ahead? Take summer classes. Earn up to 14 credits. Classes start May 23rd. More information available at www.oswego.edu backslash summer. Register now. Cam's Pizzerita. 
located at 31 West Bridge Street, serving New York-style pizza, wings, sandwiches, wraps, and desserts. Dine-in, take-out, or order delivery by calling 315-342-4255. Ever wonder where your favorite swear word originated? Well, search no further, because on Thursday, April 14th, the F word will come to Oswego. The documentary examines the long history of the F bomb and the comedians, actors, and writers who have popularized it. This event is free and will take place this Thursday in the Campus Center Auditorium from 7 to 9 p.m. Have you ever wondered what movies from across the world are like? Well, here's your chance. On Saturday, April 16th, from 1 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., there will be a variety of international films available for viewing in the basement of Hart Hall. The scheduled films to be shown are the French romance title Love Me If You Dare at 1, IP Man, an action film from Hong Kong at 3, the Hungarian comedy Black Cat and White Cat at 5.30, and to round out the evening, the Indian action film Jora Akbar at 7.30 p.m. This event is free for all, for more information, please call 312-4200. And now here's a look at your full weather forecast with meteorologist Dan Peruzzi. And I am meteorologist Dan Peruzzi. A full look at your forecast starting off with the current conditions. The outside right now we have a temperature of 40 degrees. And of course it was raining. You saw me outside there earlier. I was underneath the awning so I didn't get wet. <coughs> I didn't want the microphone to get wet, but it was raining out there. And it will continue to rain for a little open. while anyways. Winds are out of the northwest at 10 miles per hour. And that relative humidity with it raining, no surprises at 100%. Your temperatures throughout the county, not that diverse really. Fulton is the warm spot at 45. We here in Oswego are the cool spot at 40. And low 40s to about 45 throughout the rest of the county. So not that much of a temperature distribution throughout the county. And throughout the state, similar idea. Warm spot is New York City at 49. Jamestown of cool, cooler 39, but only a 10 degree difference throughout the entire state. We've certainly seen much bigger temperature differences than that. And the biggest reason for that is we had a, had a large scale weather system affecting our area, and that tends to keep temperatures pretty similar throughout the state. As you can see here is that, uh, that weather system brought a lot of rain to us, about um, uh, six tenths of an inch of rain we did receive today, um, and a zoomed in view of that. Uh, area you can see right here is the center of circulation. You see a little bit of a circulation in the rain field. Um, of course, Oswego right there. Here is more of that rain that we have to get through. I showed you before the break. And we're going to get through in the next couple of hours. Um, just, just a couple more hours of rain. Then it will be clear. You just got to hang tight here for a couple of hours. And again, here is that circulation. A little bit easier to see with the satellite image. Uh, the clouds, you can see a kind of a circulation moving that way. And it's been a larger system. Thus, the kind of similar temperatures throughout the day and a lot of rain we've seen. But as you can see, the circulation is pushing north. It's coming out of our area. What that means for our, for our forecast, the future cast at 2 a.m. shows uh, fairly low cloudy skies and uh, a little bit of blip of rain here or there, but don't worry about that. No rain in central New York by the overnight hours. All that rain should clear out. 8 a.m. waking up Thursday going to classes. Not much in the way of clouds. Absolutely no rain. By 2 p.m. Thursday, some clouds begin to uh, reach into southern New York. Chance of maybe a rain shower embedding in one of these uh, bits of clouds, but it shouldn't. Anything that does materialize, rain for a couple of seconds and be gone. So not much of a rain concern tomorrow. And 8 p.m. Thursday showed the same thing. So for tonight, low of 38 degrees. The rain, as I mentioned, will taper off. It will be cloudy throughout the rest of the night. And winds out of the northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. For Thursday, high of only about 46. Maybe a passing shower, but as I mentioned, don't count on it. Uh, it will just rain for a couple of minutes and then pretty much be gone. Partly sunny otherwise and winds out of the north at 5 to 10 miles per hour. For Thursday night, 31 degrees, partly cloudy, a chill night, a little below average, but not too cold, so it's nothing to really fret or lose any sleep over. And winds out of the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. As for your full forecast, I talked about Friday, Saturday, kind of a similar day with temperatures in the mid-50s. But for Sunday, much different story. Another weather system heads our way and uh, should give us a pretty good amount of uh, rain on Sunday. And that will affect us on Sunday and then lingering rain showers through Monday and Tuesday uh, from that storm system. So uh, Friday and Saturday not looking too bad, a little chillier than we, what we might want. But after that, uh, Sunday, 
Monday, Tuesday, a little bit of rain in the area. Okay. Well, you know, April showers do bring May flowers. That is that true. Is Wise this, words from Mike Kincaid. Is this seasonal temperatures for right now, or is it those. a little lower than normal? Uh, about mid-50s, yeah, it's pretty seasonal. That's about what you'd expect to see this time of year, so you really okay. can't complain. It'd be nice to be 60 or 70 in April, but you yeah. can't always get that in What about that other day when it was like 80 degrees? It's 81, yeah. record high in yeah. Fulton. It was, was 81. It? Yeah, wow. it showed like a 70-year record or something like that. It yeah. was like in the upper 70s. Wow. That was, that was a crazy day. Yeah. It's very enjoyable. When we come back, we will have your entertainment update with Casey McGee. But first, here is your late night menu. Afternoon delight. Rocket sky. Rocket flight. Boo! Afternoon delight. I think you got it. Cam's Pizzeria, located at 31 West Bridge Street, serving New York style pizza, wings, sandwiches, wraps, and desserts. Dine in, take out, or order delivery by calling 315-342-4255. Oh, we gonna rock down to Electric Avenue, and then we'll take it higher. Oh, we gonna rock down to Electric Avenue, and then we'll take it higher. MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Want to get ahead? Take summer classes. Earn up to 14 credits. Classes start May 23rd. More information available at www.oswego.edu backslash summer. Register now. Welcome back. We will now go to Casey McGee with our entertainment update. Thank you, Stephanie. Good evening, Oswego. I'm Casey McGee, and welcome to your entertainment update. After Kobe Bryant's homophobic slur at the Lakers game last night, according to TMZ Sports, NBA Commissioner David Stern has fined the shooting guard with $100,000. Stern says he is fully aware that the basketball is an emotional game, and everyone associated with the NBA knows that ins insensitive or derogatory comments are not acceptable and have no place in the game or society. Earlier today, during a live interview with ESPN Radio, Kobe said that he plans to repeal the fine. However, the NBA star never st stated an apology for his words directed to the referee at last night's game. Finally, after 11 years of hiding from the big screen, the famous ghost face killer is back for more. According to Hollywood Reporter, the film Scream 4, directed by Wes Craven, is anticipating to make a killing at the back box office. Neve Campbell returns as Sydney Prescott, who goes back to her hometown to promote her book on her coming to terms with her dreadful past, only to motivate the serial killer to strike once again. The film very quickly falls back into Craven's old pattern of clockwork killing spree, reducing the population of a small town, prom promising satisfaction to ser series fans. The movie is set to release in theaters this Friday. Now for a quick look at the box office. For films opening this weekend, The Princess Montpensier has received the highest rating from RottenTomatoes.com, giving it 100%. Second goes to Armadillo with a rating of 92. And finally, in third, 20th Century Fox animated film Rio with a rating of 75%. And that concludes your entertainment update. I'm Keith McGee. Thanks for watching. So it's Scream 4 Scream coming back. Scream 4, really? Doesn't this, the, the killer die at the end of each each film? I don't know. I'm not really a Scream fan. I, don't know. Yeah, I haven't I'm really watched the film. Still I remember coming. when I was in like yeah. sixth grade, that's that first one that scared me. Uh, it was like the scariest movie I've ever seen at the time. It was yeah. like nightmares for weeks. I definitely terrible. thought they would have dropped off by now. Like yeah. years after not coming around. That's impressive to yeah. even make a comeback. It's then. ridiculous. Yeah, definitely. Well, now let's take a look at your New York State news. It was a happy birthday for 11-year-old Long Island native Lauren Shields, who had a law passed today in her name. 
Lauren's law would require driver's license applicants to answer yes or not at this time as to whether they want to become an organ donor. Shields was just seven years old when a virus developed into degenerative heart disease. Two weeks after she was put on cardiac and respiratory life support, she received a donor heart in March of 2009. Upon her birthday victory, Shields said, quote, the greatest gift that I can get is just to be sure that everyone needing a transplant gets their gift and has many more birthdays. While negotiations between Governor Cuomo's administration and employee unions continue across New York State, one union has come to an agreement. Council 82, which represents state law enforcement officers including SUNY, DEC, and Park Police, have settled on a contract with the governor for the first time since 2005. According to the Times Union, some of the provi provisions, including wage freezes during the 2013 and 14 fiscal year, the elimination of step increases, and major reforms to health care benefits and overtime. It is being reported that if similar contracts are reached with other public unions, the state could reach the $540 million needed to avoid the nearly 10,000 layoffs projected in the enacted budget. And now, a full look at sports with Tara Hackey. NBA regular season is coming to its end, and the league's worst teams prepare for the N NBA draft. UConn star Kemba Walker has made the decision to enter the draft and forget about his senior year. The point guard, who recently led UConn to the NCAA championship win and the tournament's most outstanding player award, is the prime candidate for the most eligible, eligible player in this year's draft. This season, Walker averaged over 23 points per game for the Huskies, good enough for fifth in the nation. And now for your Laker athletics news. The Oswego State men's lacrosse team lost to number five ranked Cortland. Pat Tucker start, started off the game with his ninth goal, one minute in, but that must have, ha must have had awakened Cortland's offense because they came back with 13 straight goals. The Lakers ended up losing 23 to five. Britt Leon led Oswego State with two goals, while Andy Lever added a goal and an assist. The Lakers are now 5-6 overall and will host Oneana Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. The Oswego State men's tennis team won their first match in two seasons this afternoon, dominating Sage College 9-0. The Lakers open, open winning all three doubles matches, including two perfect sets that finished 8-0. Oswego State followed that impressive performance by sweeping up singles play by winning 12 out of 13 sets. A highlight of Oswego State's victory was sophomore Brian Tiozzi's and freshman Ben Weiss's shutout victories in singles play. Both Lakers failed to lose a game in any of their four sets. Oswego State takes on OCC this Thursday at the Romney Tennis Courts. That's it for sports. Now back over to the news desk. Thanks, Sarah. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the lighter side of news. But first, take a look at your community calendar. program helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. TIP, brought to you by the letter W. No matter where you live, life in the ocean depends on you. To help protect our ocean, Recycle and dispose of your trash properly. To learn what you can do, go to keepoceansclean.org. Want to get ahead? Take summer classes. Earn up to 14 credits. Classes start May 23rd. More information available at www.oswego.edu backslash summer. Register now. Cam's Pizzeria, located at 31 West Bridge Street, serving New York-style pizza, wings, sandwiches, wraps, and desserts. Dine in, take out, or order delivery by calling 315-342-4255. <laughs>
There's a place not so far away. Ask your parents to take you. Come to the forest where the other you lives. But first, stop by discovertheforest.org. Welcome back, and here's a dive into the lighter side of news. Now let's see what comedian Conan O'Brien had to say about Muammar Gaddafi in this week's Conan Clip of the Week. I couldn't believe this story, but apparently it's true. It was reported today that Muammar Gaddafi once wrote a children's book. Yeah. yeah it's called Horton Hears Voices in His Head. It's called The Bipolar Express. When you're vice president, you're always in the spotlight, even when you're napping in the middle of a major policy speech by your boss. That's what Joe Biden appeared to do today. President Barack Obama presented his debt reduction plan at George Washington University. Biden closed his eyes for 25 seconds during the 44-minute speech. He opened them when the president said, quote, tough luck, you're on your own. Maybe he was just in deep thought. Vote. Voters in the town of Leed, South Dakota, rejected a proposal on Tuesday that would have allowed nude dancing at bars in its historic downtown, an effort that supporters said would give an economic boost to the struggling mining town. The proposal was defeated by a vote of 535 to 303, which is a considerably higher turnout than normal, according to City Commissioner Casey Borsch. The nearby town of Deadwood legalized gambling in 1989, a move that created a two-decade-long lo boom that generated millions of dollars in taxes and fees. Citizens are concerned and will continue to experiment with alternative sources of income for the small South Dakota town. Getting a workout upside down, getting around the only way they know how, and one feisty gator it goes for an afternoon dip. This video that will have you talking is next, and take a look at this. Looking for a new workout routine? Take a look at this. Pull up, press down. It's a new form of yoga that uses silk hammocks and relies on gravity to stretch you out. Traditional yoga positions like downward dog are replaced by poses like this one called the upside down monkey. Anti-gravity yoga was designed by an acrobat, but experts say anyone can do it. With roads washed out, residents in this North Dakota neighborhood are using boats to get around. At least 30 homes are now islands, and some residents have been stranded for five days. The trouble started when the swollen local river started cresting. People are hopeful the water will recede by this weekend. And take a look at this. Just like humans, sometimes gators need to hop in the pool to cool off. Alligators may be common in Florida, but one family was shocked to find one in their backyard. He says, we have a, about an eight-foot gator in the pool. I said, you're kidding. So that's a first. You know, we've been here 20 years. A trapper was called in to get the gator out of the pool. He put up quite the fight, even taking a chunk out of the tile, but was eventually taken away to be released. Or take a look at this. I'm Michael Jones. And now taking a look at your class day forecast, waking up, uh, temperatures in the 30s, it'll actually be about 38 for your 8 a.m. classes, temperature of 40 by 935, 42 at 1110, and eventually into the mid-40s there, finally 46 for your 355 classes. So it'll be a relatively decent day tomorrow then? Relatively decent, a little, a little below average on the temperature, shouldn't be any rain though, so it's a step above what we had today. That's nice. Hey, I just want to get a, that upside down monkey yoga. I, you guys going to try that? What's totally. going on? That looks awesome. Now we're facing get dogs a rush, thing totally. in the past. Yeah. You do that. It's the upside down monkey now. That's what's yeah. up. <laughs> so down, it's up. up. So that's what's down. up. Play on words. <laughs> and that will do, us, do it for us here at the WTOP News team. I'm Tara Hackey. I'm Dan Peruzzi. I'm Stephanie Sweeney. And I'm Mike Kincaid. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>